Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the third TCB Forum on Banking Supervision. For me, it's a, it's a real pleasure to participate uh, in this event and to make uh, the, the welcome remarks. November 2014, exactly five years ago, was certainly a crossroads for the euro area banking sector. The creation of the single supervisory mechanism conferred both micro and macro potential responsibilities on the ECB. I will therefore focus on our achievements and challenges in coordinating both functions. In particular, I will touch upon our joint effort in carrying out banking sector stress tests and the interaction in the conduct of preventive and countercyclical macropotential policies. Looking back, the financial crisis was a wake-up call for all of us to strengthen financial regulation and banking supervision. For Europe, it especially implied harmonizing supervision across member states to protect it from national agendas. But the crisis also showed that supervising individual institutions in isolation cannot safeguard the stability of the system as a whole. Macrodential policy has to complement supervisory scrutiny by accounting for system-wide microfinancial feedback loops. Thanks to this system-wide perspective, macroprudential policy can address structural vulnerabilities and act countercyclically, tightening requirements when we see excessive risk taking and loosening them to avoid a great crunch after risks have materialized. Embedding both micro and macroprudential responsibilities within the ECB ensures that our actions are based on consistent information and are coordinated for the banking union as a whole. While retaining ultimate responsibility, the ECB carries out its supervisory tasks within the single supervisory mechanism comprising the ECB and national competent authorities. In turn, macroprudential national authorities remain the first line of defense to promptly counter emerging systemic risks. But the ECB can set higher macroprudential requirements than those set by national authorities, if necessary. National, national and European bodies complement each other and have jointly strengthened our banking and financial system. <coughs> Exercising the micro and macroprudential function requires close coordination and cooperation. One of the most notable examples is stress testing. The biennial EU-wide stress test exercises are macroprudential, macroprudential in nature and based on a constrained bottom-up approach. They aim to assess the resilience of the largest EU credit institutions to adverse economic and financial circumstances. The stress test exercises are important inputs for the ECB supervisory review and evaluation process and provide valuable insights for broader financial stability analysis based on granular information. Over the last uh, five years, cooperation between micro and macroprudential authorities has increased in all phases of a stress testing process. Today, micro and macroprudential supervision complement each other by building on the respective knowledge of the banking system to provide a sound and credible assessment of banks' resilience to stress. For instance, during the preparatory phase, supervisors and regulators discuss in detail the stress test methodology and the calibration of the adverse scenario. In the execution phase, supervisors conduct thorough quality assurance of banks' bottom-up stress tests by challenging banks' own figures, also using results from macroprudential top-down models. The top-down models are not only employed by supervisors to gain a macroprudential perspective. They can be used more broadly to understand the aggregate implications of banks' dynamic responses to stress. The major advantage of these models is that they account for the propagation and amplification of shocks across the banking system and the real economy. Today's stress testing framework with its micro, micro and macro potential elements is the result of sustained improvements since the financial crisis thanks to the ongoing involvement of all stakeholders. The continued importance of stakeholder involvement is already apparent. Discussions about the design of the long-term stress test strategy in Europe are underway with both the ECB and the European Banking Authority. Without preempting future discussions about this strategy, 
Our experiences have so far shown the benefits of including top-down approaches in supervisory assessments and of considering the wider macroprudential dimensions of stress testing in particular. Looking ahead, I believe that top-down stress test models could play a more important role in disciplining banks and reducing their incentives to systematically underestimate their vulnerabilities. These models will also help micro and macroprudential authorities to address challenges in the current macrofinancial environment. Over the past uh, few months, we have observed a deteriorating global economic outlook and increasing uncertainty. This environment might put pressure on banks' profitability and hamper their intermediation capacity as margins become squeezed and the flow of new business slows down. Under these conditions, it is particularly important that banks remain resilient and can withstand adverse shocks. Since the financial crisis, the resilience of euro area banks has improved significantly. This has been facilitated by the economic recovery and by an accommodative monetary policy stance. But most of all, it reflects both increased market pressure for banks to be well capitalized and the introduction of regulatory reforms, including macroprudential buffers. The current implemented macroprudential buffers amount to 1% of risk-weighted assets and are intended to absorb losses by banks. Of all these buffers, only the countercyclical capital buffer, CCYB, can be released. The remaining buffers are structural in nature and are not intended to be released in a severe downturn. Should bank capital ratios fall below the combined buffer requirements, they would also breach the thresholds for the maximum distributable amount, MDA. Once the MDA thresholds are breached, banks face automatic restrictions on their profit distribution to ensure that they keep funds on their balance sheets. <coughs> banks will likely want to avoid these restrictions, even in a systemic way. In such an event, banks may have the incentive to prop up capital ratios by deleveraging and disposing assets instead of dipping into the buffers. The resulting credit crunch would procyclically aggravate the downturn as experienced in previous crisis episodes. Only with reducible buffers in place can macroprudential policy fully play its countercyclical role. In an adverse scenario, the macroprudential authority would release the buffer and thereby lower the MDA threshold. To be fully effective, the free capital space would need to support the economy and not be used to satisfy, to, sat, to, to satisfy shareholders' demand for dividends. The CCYB is, an, is the instrument designed by, by legislation to be released. However, the CCB has only recently been announced and activated in the euro area. Just seven of the 19 euro area countries have activated it, as you know. And it represents only a very limited amount of capital relative to other requirements. The limited, the limited available capital for release constrains the room for maneuver of macroprudential authorities, making it harder to support the economy in a severe downturn. In the current environment, it is therefore legitimate to question whether the banking system has a sufficiently large capital buffer that can be released. Even if we consider the level of capital to be appropriate, there still seems to be a scope to have a higher share of capital in the form of releasable buffers. Looking around the world, we see that other authorities, for example, in the UK and the United States, are having similar discussions. Let me conclude. With the establishment of the single supervisory mechanism, the ECB was given micro and macro prudential responsibilities and powers. This setup aims to ensure that the two policies are well coordinated. At the same time, the current macrofinancial environment has become more challenging. The bleaker and more uncertain outlook can create the strains for bank profitability. Challenges also arise for the non-bank sector with potential spillovers for the banking industry. So for us to ensure the stability of the banking sector, we also need to deepen, to deepen our understanding of the role of non-bank institutions and monitor accordingly the risks associated with their activities. Continuing to provide a consistent policy response in the current macrofinancial <coughs> environment requires the countercyclical role of macroprudential policy to be strengthened by ensuring that releasable buffers are available. 
Ultimately, the macroprudential and macroprudential functions will need to rely on each other to provide successful prudential policies that ensure financial stability and support financial intermediation and the performance of the economy. Thank you very much. <laughs>